Hi everyone, this is another video. This is Mass Games. My name is Simon Lavender and this is Flags of the World. This is by Tactic and it's a game from uh, two players upwards. It's a game whereby it was a bit of a, a wild card in the sense that we played it at uh, an event at someone's house, so a number of people, and uh, it was a surprise, uh, surprise victory for many people. People really seemed to really get on with it and had lots of people keen to continue playing it. It comes with four games in the box, and yeah, we went through all of them. It's from eight plus, uh, two to nine players, and takes about 15 minutes. So, Flags of the World. This is a game, fun enough, about just what states on the box. And what you're doing is you're playing with these cards. These cards will be played with, but you don't have to play with them in the games I'm showing you. And that's because uh, we're showing you on the easy mode, because it's more likely you might recognize some of these flags. You know it's easy to recognize because um, if it's got a number 1 to 70, so these Dini cards have got a number in the top left-hand corner, what that represents is, I think, most likely numbers people um, or countries people recognize. So, depending on the number of players and your number of cards, let's assume we're playing with two players, so that is a total of 40 cards. What you do is you deal them out into these stacks in the center. Just imagine those are the stacks. Then you've got two players, obviously, so uh, you do four cards each. Now, what you would be doing is having uh, these in front of you. Now, the idea is, is to try and guess. So the youngest player starts, as, a, as an example, and what they need to be doing is guessing one of the cards in their row or somebody else's. If they're successful, so for example, this one I'm going to say is Australia, then um, the other person checks it, or you check it if it's, if it's yours. Additionally, you then also uh, can say to name the capital, which gives you an extra card for one of these stacks. When these stacks are empty, the game ends, and whoever has the most cards is the winner. So we're gonna say Canberra. So it is Canberra, so I take the card, and that just goes off to the side, and maybe like this, just so it looks different to these ones, so I'll keep in shot. So the next player turns, takes their turn. So that continues until all these cards have gone. So as you can see, some of them, like, I'm not sure on this one. Um, I don't think it is uh, this, oh, Afghanistan, no, Saudi Arabia. As you can see, it's still in one of those cards. Um, so that's the game. What people might not like is the fact that you'll start to learn more and more as you go, which is the irony. It's a, <laughs> it's a great game to learn stuff about. And there are countries I've been to and I've got some of these things wrong. But at the same time, um, Playing a game like this, you could become very good at it. Having said that, um, whilst I have won some of these games, I have won them all, and it's quite interesting. Just to show you some of the other ones, you know, these are really far-flung places. Some of them you might recognise, but yeah, all over the place. And uh, it's just curious to see, you know, these different flags. You might have spotted them once or twice, but you have you know extra bonuses if you can get um, that country's capital as well. So that was game one. Now game for playing with uh, in game two and three. Game two is for children and it's ages of six plus and game three is uh, more of a party game for five players plus. But I'm gonna show you another example and this is gonna be game four. So it's a bit more harder. You can obviously shuffle in all the other cards. We'll just play with these ones to keep it as a, as a stack. Also you'll we'll see there's a small arrow to show which way up you're pointing for the cards just to try and work out what it is. Now in this instance, uh, what you're trying to do is get the most cards possible, and then the person at the end, once these have all gone, wins. So these will keep going until you've got obviously the number of cards equal to uh, the number of players. As I said, if it's a two-player, you're playing with 40. It's approximately 50 with three, and with four, you're looking to play with, I think, about 60. So um, actually, it's two to three is 40 cards, four to five is 50 cards, and six to seven is, uh, yeah, 60 cards. So... What you're looking to do is starting with the youngest player, they're trying to guess stuff. So we're going to go with um, Poland and Warsaw. Now what I don't do is I don't look at the card, but what I do do is basically take the card, and if nobody else says you're wrong, it isn't Poland, then what happens is they need to give me one of their cards. Now the first round, you're not going to have any cards, but um, if nobody checks it, I don't even check it either, it goes in front of me. It only gets checked if someone says you must check it. Then it's next person's turn and imagine they take this. Now I know it's Austria, but imagine they say it's, I don't know, Timbuktu or whatever it might be. 
let's say, um, Ethiopia, then I say, no, it's wrong. And uh, if it is then wrong, what happens is, of course, they check it, and if, yeah, it's wrong, then they have to give me a card. So now I'm closer to it, to victory. Additionally, you can do, as I said, you can do it at the capital city, which can give you a bonus card. So the risk is going with bonus card is, yes, you might be wrong. Um, yep, so it is literally to the top card on somebody else's player pile if they can't do it. So that is the game, obviously, with 70 cards. There's a whole bunch more. The game comes with uh, yeah, 200, so it, it is a huge amount. And it does come with some kind of like reference sheets as well. So for example, for Europe, you can actually see, you know, what are the countries in Europe, or at least what are they playing with in this example of the game. So countries such as South Sudan, I don't believe will be in this one. Um, but yeah, if you want to um, get it, you can um, take it, if you get that bonus by getting a capital city, you're gonna take another card from the stack. Now like that first game, what's really good about this game is the fact that you can choose which one. So I can know, I mean, I think that's Chile, I think that's Norway, not sure about these ones. I think that was the Saudi Arabia one from before. I might just choose to have this one and take, uh, start stick it over here. So that's the advantage. Um, but yeah, you're looking to get all those cards in your hand and it's quite interesting because of course, if you get a card wrong, um, it's gonna go in your stack and then that could be given to somebody later. So yeah, it's quite interesting. But um, yeah, by the fact that if something does get checked, not spotted, but you're not certain, it does increase that replayability because you're not getting to know about every card. And even once you've played it a few times, amount of colors they've got you know, red white and blue in as an example i think it's upper 30s it can be confusing and i can still be confused between say um iceland and norway and stuff like that so that is flags of the world and um i'll just quickly do a video to see um actually how much it's going to be weighing so this game you can also play with um as a group so you can play four to six. In this instance, you're playing with a teammate, say, opposite, in which case what you're doing is either trying to correctly guess something, or if you're not sure, ask the person opposite, obviously if it's a team of uh, two, and therefore you have to read something else on the card, and they have to be able to, to guess something there to obviously keep staying in there. And cumulatively, the persons who do get those most flags will, um, will be the winner. So yeah, what you can do is read out the clue. So you could say um, the capital city is Rome, or you could say this country consists of, normally it's best to just stick to these two, you can house rule it, but to say this country consists of the Apennine Peninsula jutting out into the Mediterranean. So that is the first clue that you'd read out. And then the second one you can read out there too. But of course you could be helping your opponents because what you can be doing is you then will be sticking that card to the bottom of one of those piles in the center. And of course, that card's gonna come up later and somebody might, including in your team, realize what it is. So here's game one. We've talked about the star play. We've talked about game four and games two to three. So this is the one whereby it's a simpler version of game one and you're looking to collect them. But the difference being is that you need to basically just connect a certain number. Whereas game three is a game like a team, and you're looking to see how many, you said you're gonna, the person who's taking the leader is gonna choose 20 cards in advance, and then you're trying to guess a certain amount of things. So can you guess something with no clues, with, uh, with one clue, or with two clues to give a number of points? So you all start going through, churning through the cards a bit more, which is why I recommend those other games, because I think games one and four, especially when you're playing with the, the clue option in a team play, I think works very effectively. And uh, as a reason, those are the ones I recommend. Look forward to hopefully maybe playing this again in the next week, maybe more than once. And uh, yeah, if you can see Flags of the World, check it out. It's a lightweight game and easy to carry around. Thank you, bye.